Good morning and welcome to Echo Assembly of God's online service. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. If you could do me a favor, leave a comment below. We would love to connect with you this morning. Today is a special Sunday. It's Communion Sunday. So please make sure to have your elements available before the end of the message. So either juice or water, crackers or, or bread will be completely fine. And I'll be coming back with my husband, Pastor Mike, and we're gonna have an opportunity as a church family to take communion together. We love to engage and connect with our both our online Online and an in-person um, church family throughout the week. And we got two great opportunities happening this week to do just that. The first is our Lord's Cupboard free food distribution is happening on Monday and Tuesday of this week. Monday, we pack and prep to hand out food. And then on Tuesday, we actually hand out the food. So if you can even stop by just for a couple hours, we would love to have your help. It would be, again, a great way to stay connected to the church family. Um, we are able to bless so many different people in our local community through our food free food distribution every month. Um, if you are um, in need of food or if you know someone who is in need of food, as long as they live in New Jersey, we can help them out. And they can come out again on Tuesday from 10 to 5, and we would love to connect with them and help them and bless them. Another great thing happening this week is our women's group is meeting on Saturday right here at the church. Because of social distancing, we are limiting our amount of space. So if you or your friends or anybody you want to invite wants to come, that's great. But we would like if you could register beforehand through our church app or online through acoag.churchcenter.com. Um, our women's event is always a great time. We're going to have food, fellowship, giveaways. We always, like I said, just have an amazing time. So please make sure to sign up for that this week. And believe it or not, I know this may seem a little out there, but Easter's coming. And I, I don't know about you, but it's coming up fast. And so we have some great opportunities that are going to be happening on Easter weekend in person. Uh, the first is our Good Friday service, which will be Friday for, um, from 7 to 8.15. Uh, again, it's going to be a great time just to connect as a church family, to uh, have some time of prayer, worship, and just reflecting on the sacrifice that Christ made for us. And then on Easter Sunday, we'll be having two different services. Child care will be provided at both. Um, the one thing we ask, if you are going to be joining us in person, much like the women's event, if you could register beforehand, just so that we make sure we have enough space, especially for our kids um, at both services, so that we can st continue to practice social distancing and different things like that. So if you, again, if you want to register, you can do that through our app, or you can do that online through acoag.churchcenter.com. Again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're going to be jumping into um, our new series that we started last week. We're going to talk about thoughts today. Before before we jump into the message, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much for your faithfulness, your grace, and your mercy. Father, as we get into today's word, as we learn what it means to have our thoughts focused on you, Father, I pray against any distraction, anything that could come um, and just distract us from your word and your truth this morning. Father, may you be honored and glorified in all that we do. We pray this in your holy and precious son's name. Amen. Here I am doing the same things I told myself I'd never do again. Why can't I ever quit? I have no self-discipline. With Christ's help, I will be different. He's helping me become who God wants me to be. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Some people get all the breaks, but not me. No matter how hard I try, things never go my way. God is with me and has plans to bless me. He is directing my steps and giving me power to do all he wants me to do. This is going to be my best year ever. Every year I try to change and every year I fail. Forget it. This year I'm not even going to try. This year will be different. I did the right thing today. If I can do it today, I can do it tomorrow. One day at a time, God is changing me. Succeeding at the big things has a lot to do with the little things. Actions matter. Small things, big difference. Thanks again for joining us on our online service. I'm really glad that you're with us. I really believe God's going to speak to you and you're going to grow closer to him. And I'm really hoping you were with us last week because last week we started a brand new sermon series called The Power of One. And we're looking at spiritual discipline, spiritual habits from a little bit of a different perspective. In other words, what we're doing is we're trying to be very practical. What are some things that we can do to begin to grow in our relationship with God? Because you and I both know that we need to kind of turn our heart towards. We need to lean our heart towards him and allow him to move in our life. And the way that that happens is when we begin to practice some spiritual disciplines. What are some practical ways that we can do uh, 
each and every day that can make big differences in our life. And we started with a premise for this whole sermon series, and that's this, is that it's often the small things that no one sees that results in the big things that everybody wants. And you've seen this played out in your life, right? You've seen it. Maybe you've got this big goal that you want to hit you know, reduce your weight by 20 or 30 pounds. And so you start dieting. Well, you know, well, as I do that, if you diet for one day, you don't lose all that weight. No, you have to do it each and every day. It's the small things that you do each and every day, the small disciplines that you have that allow you to see those big results. You know, think of it like all of a sudden I decide I'm going to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? And I'm looking at him like, man, there's no way I could be like him. His muscles are huge. He has muscles on top of muscles. Well, the way I achieve that big goal is by doing the small things. In other words, I need to be lifting every day. I need to be eating right. I need to be doing all these small things faithfully so that I could see the big result. And there's a lot of times we see people who are love Jesus and we're like, man, I wish I could be as spiritually mature as they are. I wish I could be as close to God as they are. They are so close to God. I feel so far away. Well, the reason they're so close to God is because they're doing the small things faithfully every day that make the big differences in our life. And so we're talking about these spiritual disciplines and, and we're starting with the small things. We're talking about one word, one thought, and one habit. So last week, I challenge you to pick one word. Just pick one word that would make a difference in your life. I told you what mine word was. My, my, mine word. <laughs> my word. My word was kingdom. The series we just went through, I've kind of adopted that word because me thinking about Jesus as our king has begun to really change my perspective and how I live for Jesus. I feel like my faith is going deeper. I feel like I'm having more peace and more joy that I'm learning that I'm living in his kingdom. I'm building his kingdom. I need to, he's my king. It's begun to change everything. And it's just a small word, a small thing, but it's beginning to change everything. And I really hope you picked that word. If you didn't, I have a word for you. It's called procrastination. In other words, get off your butt and do it. Listen, so many times we want to see change in our life. I know so many believers, so many people love Jesus, like, I want to get closer to him, but yet they don't do anything about it. Their life looks exactly the way it did before. You know, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results? Listen, if you want to get closer to Jesus, if you want to see more of God in your life, if you want to see more of God's power and love and grace in your life, then you got to change. You have to adjust. You have to turn your heart more towards him than it already is and begin to do some things on a daily basis that can make all the difference in the world. So today we're talking about our thoughts. And I think... I think, (laughs) when I think, I think that you believe that your thoughts are powerful. And I believe that my thoughts are powerful. We know that. We see this all throughout the world, how powerful our thoughts are. Our thoughts affect every area of our life. Our thoughts can change the direction of our life. Our thoughts influence what we say, what we do, how we act. I actually heard... uh, or saw a a quote that was like, that said this. It says, watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. And if you think about it, everything starts with a thought, doesn't it? Your habits start because with a thought. Your words start because of a thought that pops in your head. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. It is so important that we understand the power of our thoughts in our life because they can change everything. As a matter of fact, what I found and probably what you've seen is that your life will naturally gravitate towards the strongest thought that you have. Your life will naturally gravitate towards the strongest thought that you have. The Bible, King Solomon said it this way in Proverbs 23, For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. In other words, whatever we think about, that's the way our life goes. Our life will naturally gravitate that way. So for example, if you're like, well, you know, I I don't think I, I can do anything. Well, then you probably won't do anything. If you think life is is bad, then you're gonna have a bad life. 
If, if you think you don't have anything to offer, well, then you're probably not going to offer anything to anybody in life. You know, If you think you're a failure, then you're probably going to be failing at a lot of different things because that's the way you think. But if you think that you can do it, well, you probably will do it. If, if you think that there's opportunities out there, I guarantee you're going to see opportunities out there. If, if you think God is for you and with you, then you're going to see his power and his presence at work more in your life, around you and in you and even through you. Why? Because our lives gravitate towards what? Our strongest thought. And so if our thoughts are about the Lord, that's where our life goes. If our thoughts are about us or ourselves or the world, then that's where our life goes. And so what I want to do today is I want to give you kind of three practical ways, three steps, again, small steps that you can take. I can do this, you can do this, that can pay out huge dividends in our life. And so let's take a look at the first one is this, is we need to think about what you think about. I know that's a little funny. Think about what you think about. In other words, we need to kind of do, whoops, a think audit. In other words, I think, I have thoughts. They run around my mind, but I'm not necessarily sure I'm really thinking about the things that I'm thinking about. Like they just, my thoughts, they come in and I'm thinking them, but I'm never evaluating, like, is this a good thought or a bad thought? Is this true or is it false? I never really think about what I think about. And so chances are you probably don't either. <laughs> you know, if we need to do a think audit. And so I've got a little graph up here and I want you to take a look at it with me. And maybe yesterday or maybe the last week or maybe even the last couple of weeks of your life, do you feel like you've been more worried or do you feel like you've been more at peace? Where do you, if on a scale of one to 10, where, what, what number would you circle? Or maybe, maybe do you feel like you've been more negative? Or maybe you feel like you've been more positive? You know, I, I will tell you this. I've met a lot of people who do not see themselves as negative, but they're negative. They just don't think they're negative. And so my challenge to you is if you really want the answer to this one, go to people who know you and say, hey, am I more of a positive person or more of a negative person? And, you know, am I more of a negative Nelly or am I more of a positive Polly? I don't know. I don't even know what, what I just said, but you know what I'm talking about. Like, so just ask other people, say, hey, am I more negative? Do I see like the glass half full or am I more of a half empty type guy? And then the other question, you know, we just finished up the kingdom series or we were talking about thinking more about the Lord and his kingdom. Do you think more about the world and the material things and money and stuff like that? Do you find your thoughts going there or are they more towards the eternal things, the things of the Lord? And this is such an important part of our life because the more that we're worried, the more that we're negative, the more that we're thinking about the world, man, that's the direction our life's going to go into. But if we can be more at peace, if our thoughts are more peaceful and more positive, even by nature, and we think more about the eternal, the things about the Lord, man, that's the direction our life's going to go into. And today's culture is screaming at us to be more worried, to be more negative, to be more afraid, to cancel everything. Everybody's wrong. Nobody's right. And all these other things that it just, it just hurts us in our life. And so we really need to begin to think about what we think about. You know, I think that's why Paul, when he wrote Romans, he said this in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. He said, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper act of worship. He says, therefore, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You know, I love this passage because you can see the correlation between the things that you think about and what your life looks like. So Paul says, listen, he goes, because of everything God has done in our life, because of, because of his mercy and his grace in our life, live your way in a way that pleases him. Live your life in a way that honors him. And then he says, so don't, be, don't look like the world looks. Don't act like the world look, looks. Don't behave like the world behaves. The way you do that is you do not conform to the pattern of this world 
But instead, he said, be transformed. In other words, be renewed in your mind. Start thinking differently. Change the way you think. Understand what you're thinking and evaluate it and begin to change your thinking. Because the way that you, when you change your thinking, you change your behavior, you change your life. This is such an important thing that we need to understand. And I think that's why Paul said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to 24, and in this passage, again, we see this connection between how we think, what our thoughts are, and the direction and what happens in our life. So let's take a look at this passage. Paul says, so I tell you this, he goes, no, I insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the fertility of their thinking. They're darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. They've lost all sensitivity to the Lord. They've given themselves over to sensuality of the world as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they're full of greed. Oh, this is such an important passage for us to understand that whatever we think, that's the way our life will gravitate towards. And so Paul is saying in this verse, in this chapter, he's saying, listen, if you are don't believe in God if you're not living for him, if you're just allowing your thoughts to be filled with yourself and the world, man, it's going to affect you. It's going to hard, begin to harden your heart towards the things of the Lord. That's why it is so important that you would embrace this, that you would understand this, that we would actually live out this way. In other words, we would live out spiritual disciplines in our life because it helps our hearts to stay soft before the Lord. It allows our faith to be able to be moldable before him. But very easily, if we're not careful in the way that we think, our life can begin to go in the wrong direction. So let's, let's pick up back in this verse here where it talks about, and it says this, he goes, you were taught, Paul says, listen, you were taught in regard to the former way of life. In other words, the way you used to live is kind of to put off your old self. In other words, don't act that way anymore because it's being corrupted by deceitful desires, but instead to be made new in what? The attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. This is so important. The way that you begin to change your behavior, some of you have behavior that you don't like. Some of you are, have ungodly behavior, sinful behavior that you keep going back to and you're like, man, I don't know why I keep going back to it. I don't know why I keep going back to it. It's because you haven't changed your thinking. You may have a desire not to do it, but you keep going, your behavior is you keep going back to it. Why? Because you haven't changed your mind. You haven't renewed your thinking. You've allowed that junk type of thought, the sinful thought to run around and have your mind is a playground. You can't give it that free range. You can't allow it to roam like that. You have to think about the things you're thinking about and then begin to change the way you think. And that's why Paul said, or the, the second thing we need to do is to capture destructive thoughts. We need to capture those thoughts that are running around in our head that are leading to the, to the sinful behavior. We need to take them captive. We need to not allow them to run around and have their way in our life. Any lies that go against the word of God, anything that leads us down a, a destructive road, leads us down a road that leads us away from God, we need to take those thoughts captive. We can't allow them to be going around around in our mind. You know, I, I heard an old saying before. I think it was Martin Luther who, who said this, but he said, you know, you, you, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can, you can stop it from nesting in your hair. And he was just kind of making the point that you can't stop thoughts from coming into your mind, but you can do something with them once they come into your mind. And so we need to be thinking about what, what is that thought? What what does that thought really mean? And am I believing that thought? And then we need to take that thought captive and do something with it. And that's where Paul said in 2 Corinthians, he said, listen, and he tells us a very powerful point in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. He says, listen, he says that, that we don't deal with this in our flesh by our own will by our own power, by our own strength. This isn't some self-help thing. Just think positively. No, the way that you begin to take your thoughts captive, the way you begin to change your thoughts is by having the power of God in your life. Let's read this verse, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. 
The weapons we fight with are not weapons of this world. They're not fleshly. They're not from ourselves. On the contrary, our weapons have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to God. The only way that we can control these destructive thoughts, that we can break their power in our life, is through the power of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. And what we do is we take the thought, it comes in, we know it's a lie, we know it goes against God's word, we know it is not of the Lord, and what do we do? We take it captive, and we do what the scripture says, we make it obedient to Christ. We take it captive, we take it to Christ, and we make it obedient. How do you make a thought obedient? Simple. You change it. You change it. You begin to change your thoughts. So in other words, okay, this thought I had, I'm worthless. No, I'm not. God's word says he died for me, that I was, I was paid for with a price, the price of Jesus Christ. So what have you done? You've taken that thought and you've made it, you've taken it captive and you've made it obedient to Jesus. You've changed it so it now fits what God says about you. You know, I wrote a couple other things down here. Maybe you're like, I'm unlovable. No, God loves you unconditionally. For God so loved the world, for God so loved you that he gave his one and only son. You know, I'm a failure. No, God created you to do good works that he prepared for you in advance. You're not a failure. Or I'm a mistake. No, you're not a mistake. God knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. I'm never going to get over this struggle or this issue. You know what? The Bible says that you are an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony, that you're more than a conqueror. the, The literal translation means you're a super conqueror in the Lord. Or you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. You can be content in every situation. You can walk through every situation. Why? I just can't get through this. Yes, you can, because God's going to give you the perseverance and the strength to walk through it because he's with you. So what do you do? You take these thoughts that come in. You begin to think about what you're thinking about. You begin to evaluate them. You say, you know what? Is this real? What am I doing with this? Why is this thought here? You begin to take it captive. You make it obedient to Christ. You change it. And then you let God begin to do the great things he wants to do in you. And then the third one is this, is that you begin to transition your thoughts to spiritual things. This is so huge. We just can't take a thought and throw it out. We just can't take a thought, make it obedient to Christ and get rid of it. No, we have to begin to transition our thoughts. In other words, right now, maybe out of a hundred thoughts, you have one spiritual thought or one godly thought. So what we need to do is we need to start upping the number of spiritual thoughts we have and start decreasing the number of worldly thoughts and fleshly thoughts that we have. And that's not easy to do, but we can begin to transition how we think. And it starts by taking our thought, thinking about what we're thinking about, taking our thoughts captive, and then beginning to do something with them. We don't allow those destructive thoughts to stay in there. We replace them with the word of God so that we can begin to think more about God and his word and what he says. That's why it is so vitally important that spiritual disciplines are a part of your life. They help you do this. That's why reading God's word is vital to your relationship with Jesus. Why? Because you're getting his word in your life instead of your own thoughts, the worldly thoughts, the culture's thoughts. You get God's word inside of you. I want you to look at a couple scriptures with you if I can. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 5 to 8. It says, those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their mind set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. This is such a powerful passage because we learn about the, what happens with our thoughts and our mind and learn what happens that simply our life gravitates towards our strongest thoughts. Uh, you can make a chart 
with this passage, and I did it. So look here, right here. And so in other words, the way that we can begin to transition our thoughts of spiritual things is through the thoughts that we have, through our mind. And so the Bible says, listen, if your mind is set on the flesh, in other words, if you're only thinking about the things of the flesh, worldly things, your own desires, your own wants, your own needs, your own things, he says, what happens is, is when you set your mind on that, in other words, the more that you think about it, what happens is, is you begin to be governed. You begin to be controlled by the flesh. And he says, and then, since you're being controlled by the flesh, you be start becoming hostile to God. Eat very slowly. You get hostile to the things of the Lord. Have you ever felt lukewarm in your life? Have you ever felt God was far away from you? Have you ever felt like, man, just your relationship just isn't as passionate with the Lord as it used to be? Chances are, it's the thoughts that you've been thinking. You've allowed your thoughts just to relax. You've allowed your thoughts to think more worldly, think more of yourself. And guess what happens? When our mind is set on the flesh, we begin to be controlled by the flesh. Our life becomes hostile to God and it leads us to death. We begin to experience death in the different areas of our life. But he says, when your mind is set on the spirit, in other words, when you're thinking about the Lord, when you're thinking about his word, when you're thinking about Jesus, when that occupies more of your thoughts in your mind, how you can help somebody, how you can tell someone about Jesus, how you can love somebody more, how you can encourage them, how you can build them up, thinking about God's grace and his mercy and his faith and his power in your life, then what happens, your mind gets, it gets set on the spirit. And when your mind gets set on the spirit, man, then you get governed, you get controlled by the spirit of God. And that means your life, you begin to submit more to God, more and more and more. And the next thing you know, you have life and peace inside of you. And then the last line of that passage says this, those who live in the realm of the flesh, they cannot please God. You can't live by faith in God if your mind's not set on him. Such an important passage. And Paul even says this in Colossians and Philippians. In Colossians chapter 3, he says, listen, set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on this earth. That's where your life is found. Philippians chapter 4, Paul's in prison here and he's writing to the church of Philippi. And he says, listen, I just one last thing, just one last thing I want to tell you. So Paul's saying, listen, this is the last thing I want you to know. He says this, he says, fix your thoughts on what is true on what is honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of all praise. And then he says, put them into practice. There again, the mind and the, 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 our life gravitating towards our thoughts. Put them into practice all you've learned from me and all the things you saw me do. He goes, then the God of peace will be with you. Man, we need to, to fix our thoughts. There's a scripture in... Uh, Psalms, Psalm 119, verses 15 to 16, it says, I will meditate on your precepts. In other words, I will think about your, your word. I'll think about your laws. I'll think about your grace. I'll think about your goodness. I'll think about your character. I'll think about your, your precepts, all of who you are. And he says, I'm, I will fix my eyes on your ways. He says, I'm going to fix my eyes. In other words, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about it. I'm going to focus on it. I'm going to meditate on it. And I'm not going to forget it. Now, as, as you look at this scripture, you're probably wondering and thinking about a turtle. You're like, what's a turtle doing up there, Mike? Maybe you're like, what? Is, is that supposed to show me how to like, like the turtle's head is up and his, his eyes sticking out? Like, is that supposed to teach me how to fix my eyes? No, this is just an illustration to show you that you probably started thinking about a turtle. You know, I, I saw this picture. I was like, oh, a turtle. Oh, I had one of those turtles. I used to keep them in, a, in an aquarium. And then, oh, there was a time I said, one of these turtles were, was crossing the road and, and, I, and I stopped and I saved it. And these cars were going by clapping and cheering me on because I saved the turtle. It was the weirdest thing right down there in West Berlin near the Home Depot. And so this picture, maybe you were thinking when you saw it of a turtle. Why? Because your eyes were fixed on it and you saw it. And so because your eyes were fixed on it, you started to think about it. Can I tell you, this is why it's so important that we fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. Man, when you fix your eyes on Jesus Christ, that's what you begin to think about. That's the thoughts that start coming in your head, right? I used to always tell 
the uh, young people, I was a youth pastor for years, I'd always just tell the young guys, they would start looking at girls and everything, and you know, they'd do one of these things, a girl would walk by and they'd do one of these things where they would just keep staring at them, staring at them, I'm like, stop it, you're being, that's disrespectful and it's freaky, stop it, you're not a stalker. And so I kind of came up with this phrase like, notice but don't focus. In other words, you can see, oh, that's a very beautiful girl, but don't sit there and stare. Don't focus on it. Just allow that because what happens is whatever you fix your eyes on, you begin to think about. And so we want our thoughts to be godly. We want our thoughts to be pure. We want our thoughts to be admirable. And if you're sitting at staring like that, your thoughts are not going to be honorable. They're not going to be pure. It's the same way in our relationship with God. The more that you can fix your eyes on Jesus, it begins to change every area of your life. It begins to influence every area of your life. You'll find that you'll be more generous. You'll find that you'll be more loving, that you'll be more patient. You'll be more kind. Why? Because your now thoughts are now fixed on God. And that's what uh, it says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, one of my favorite passages, to fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. It says, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. In other words, this life is a race that we run, and we need to fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, or the author and the perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, listen to this, he endured the cross scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It says, consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. I love this. Listen, you fix your eyes on Jesus. You think about him. You think about what he went through for you. You think about all that he did for you. You think about all the things that happened to him when you're going through them. And guess what? He says, it'll help you not grow weary and you will not lose heart. Man, we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. Getting our thoughts in the right place is so powerful. So here's the three steps that we need to think about what you're thinking about. Think about it. Actually evaluate your thoughts. And then take captive your destructive thoughts. Don't let those lies, don't let the destructive thoughts take hold of you. And then transition your thoughts. Begin to transition more of your thoughts away from yourself, off of the culture and the world and what the world tells you, and start focusing on God, his word, and what he says about you. It begins to change everything. So now, this is where the the rubber meets the road, and that's, you need to pick a thought. You need to pick one thought. Just one thought that you have, and it may take a little time to think about the thought that you want to pick. It takes time to think about it. What's a thought that's been guiding you? Maybe what's a thought that's been directing you and it's been leading you in the wrong way? Maybe you feel like you're not loved. Maybe you feel you're like you're not worth anything. Maybe you feel like you don't deserve anything. Maybe you feel like you've been abandoned or rejected. I don't know. But whatever that thought is, I guarantee you it's destructive, it's a lie, and it's not part of God's word. And so what thought can you take, grab and hold on to, and then be able to put it and make it captive and put it against God's word? I just wrote a, a few things down. I put them on the screen here for you. You know, I can, I can make it through this life because Christ is my strength. You know, I can trust God and have peace in the areas I can't control. With God's help, I can be changed and transformed. No, it's not by my strength or my power, but because of God's spirit in me, I'll be different. I'm a giver. I, can tru- I truly believe it's more blessed to give than receive. I'm not perfect, but God can still use me to help someone. I can live a life of holiness because of God's spirit within me. W- what is the thought that you've been having that is taking you away from the Lord, that is pulling you away from him? Maybe it's fear, maybe it's anxiety, I don't know. But let, if you just take a moment, if you close your eyes and you think about what, think about the Lord and the, I really believe the Holy Spirit will speak to you and he'll show you what that thought is. He'll, he'll tell you what it is. And, and chances are, maybe that thought is even somewhat connected to the word that you picked last week. And here's the thing, when you pick your thought, make sure that you take steps to fix your thought on God's word because that's not the way we naturally lean. That's not natural for us. It goes against our flesh and, and our flesh gets hostile towards God. That's why it's such a tension that you feel and you fight. But you, you, you can do it. Just do that small thing. Listen, if you'll be faithful in the small things, God's gonna do amazing things in your life. 
you know, we're going to get ready for communion. So if you haven't had your communion elements, go ahead and grab them, maybe water, juice, a cracker, toast, wafer, something like that. Uh, and I'm going to invite my wife to come back and we're going to do communion with you. And if your family's with you, grab your whole family, allow them to come and be a part of it. This is a great opportunity. And, and when we take communion, we're celebrating who Jesus is and we're celebrating what he's done for us and we're remembering. And Jesus said, every time you do this, remember me. In other words, put your thoughts back on me. So communion is a great opportunity for us to put our thoughts back on him, to think about the thoughts that we shouldn't be having, the destructive thoughts, and take steps. One of the steps that you can take right here, right now, in just about 30 seconds, is to take communion and to remember what Jesus has done for you and to think about what he's done for you and why he did that, because he loves you and cares about you, and allow that to set the direction of your life.
at the foot of the cross. Hopefully by now you were able to get the elements of communion, maybe some uh, water, some juice, toast, bread, something like that. Uh, I was able to uh, have my wife come back and have communion together, so we'll be receiving it together. And this would be a great time if you have family with you. Go ahead and grab your family, bring them around, and we'll be able to do communion together. And, you know, like we just talked about, communion is a time where we remember, we think about all that Jesus has done for us and, and the sacrifice that he gave, that he gave his life for us. And this is a great opportunity for, our to, for us to fix our thoughts on him. And also, if there's any of those lies or destructive thoughts that we just talked about, this is a great opportunity to kind of take those thoughts captive and, and put them to the word of God because Jesus loves us. He cares about us. He's got a plan for our life. And when we remember and we celebrate communion, we're remembering all that he's done for us. Absolutely. You know, I think just with everything we've experienced over the last year, what a, it's just never been a better time to just take a moment in our, the busyness of our days and the craziness of our schedule and the uncertainty of the world and just to take a moment and to remember the sacrifice that God did for us. We can experience life and grace and mercy because of what he did, not because of what we did, but because of what he did on that cross so that we could experience life. And so as we take on um, the different elements this morning, I want to challenge you just to really Take a break, take a moment, and just allow this to be something special. Allow this to be a moment where you push all the craziness of your day aside and you allow it to be all about Christ and what he did for us. I think that's a great point. As a matter of fact, if Paul talks about in Corinthians, kind of examining our hearts, see if there's any unconfessed sin there, see if there's anything uh, in our relationship with God that doesn't belong, and then we're to confess it to him, lay it down, surrender it and ask for forgiveness of those sins. And so we're going to do that right now. We're just going to take a few moments just to be quiet before the Lord. You know, it's, things are very hectic and busy in life, and I'm sure you're ready to get your day going. But let's just take a few seconds just to be quiet before the Lord. Then I'll pray, and then we'll, we'll receive communion. So, Father, we just come before you. We surrender our lives, lay down ourselves, our wants, our desires to you. We remember your sacrifice. We remember your son. We thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness of sins that we have. We thank you for the relationship that we have. We thank you, Lord, for giving us your grace and your mercy in our life. Lord, we love you so much. We thank you, Lord, for the love that you give us. And pray, Father, as we uh, receive communion, that we would continually remember your son, and what he's done for us, and what that means for us in our life, that we now have true life, abundant life, and we can live for you each and every day. We are free from sin because of the power of your son. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So if you turn to Matthew chapter 26, verse 26, that's where Jesus is having his Passover meals, what we call the Last Supper. And the Bible says in verse 26, it says that Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said take and eat this is my body which is given for you so let's partake of this element of communion thank you Jesus thank you of giving yourself Lord and then it continues and says that Jesus he took the cup and he lifted it up and he gave thanks for it and he said this is the blood of the new covenant and so as we drink this We're drinking and we're confirming the new covenant which Jesus has done for us. So let's partake of this element of communion. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you for your son. We thank you for the sacrifice. We thank you for the life that you give us. We thank you, Lord, that we can turn our hearts towards you. We can give you everything that is in our life and that you can be our Lord, our Savior, our King, and our Heavenly Father. Lord, we just pray that you would continue to move in each person's life that's watching right now, that you would bless them, Lord God, and that you would draw them closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thanks again for being with us. Thanks for watching us on behalf of my wife and I. We're so happy that you're with us. You know, we really just want to continue to connect and engage with you. If there's anything we can do to serve you or to help you, please let us know. And we'd love to be able to see you in person sometime soon. God bless and have a great week.